the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is the feast of the Apostle and Evangelist and Martyr, St. Matthew. St. Matthew's Gospel is the first of the four Gospels, St. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It is the first book of the New Testament. St. Matthew, his Gospel comprises 28 chapters. St. Dominic and many other saints used to carry this gospel always with them. And it has a power against the devil. It is quoted in exercising the devil of a de de demonically possessed person. St. Matthew's gospel is, is a treasure. And we would not have this gospel. We wouldn't have any of this and all the other his accounts of his going to preach in Ethiopia and Persia and to die a martyr for our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Matthew <coughs> probably met the Virgin Mary like St. Luke because he has details of our Lord's early life with the three kings. He also treats of the public, the public life of our Lord. All his, many of his sermons, numerous miracles, many of the parables and the, the great miracles that Christ performed. He, he lists quite a few of them. And then he mentions many times the prophecies of our Lord's out of his own mouth, the prophecy of his passion and death and his resurrection. And he gives a detailed account of our Lord's passion. The denial of Judas St. Peter's denials, the agony in the garden, Jesus arrested, his scourging, the whole way of the cross, the crucifixion and death and burial of our divine Lord. And St. Matthew, how he would have written this out of his heart because he was one of those bishops that fled at the agony of the garden. So he certainly wrote this to convince the Jews that Jesus Christ truly is the, the true Messiah. And he has many of the quotes from the Old Testament pointing to Christ, just to show how the Old Old Testament points to our Lord Jesus Christ. So St. Matthew is gospel, the, the first word of his gospel in Latin is liber, which means book, the book of the generation. And the last word of his gospel is Mundi, of the world. Uh, I am, behold, I am with you all days, even unto the consummation of the world. So this book, <coughs> this book will proclaim the light of Christ, the light of the Catholic faith. Uh, many of the monks call the four gospels simply the catechism of the apostles. Because through these we see our Lord, we hear his words, we hear his parables. St. Matthew was there to hear it in many of these accounts. He witnessed the miracles. And also there's, a, there's an interesting detail that's brought out by St. John Chrysostom, which is, our Lord, when he goes into Cafarno, he works many miracles. He gives numerous sermons. And then he meets St. Matthew. And St. Matthew is the only one in describing his conversion and his call. He's the only one of the three, of the four evangelists that actually puts his name. So there was a sinner, a tax collector. His name was Matthew. And he's, he's, he's putting his name onto this. And perhaps it's very likely that St. Matthew, when our Lord arrived in Capernaum, he had worked thousands of miracles. And it's very likely as people were coming back and forth and exchanging money at his booth, it's very likely he heard about this miracle worker, this Jesus from Nazareth, this great rabbi, and St. Matthew, perhaps thought to himself, well, I'm so, I'm so steeped in sin. 
I'm not even worthy to go out to hear him preach. But while, while our Lord was in Capernaum, he, he has many miracles. And news of this would have reached St. Matthew's ears. So that by the time our Lord arrived in the city, where the banks are, the tax collectors have their booths up. And they charge, they're not always honest with their money, the people don't like them because they're always overtaxing them. And St. Matthew was one of these. And St. Matthew puts his name. Now, as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew. Now, the other evangelists called him the Levite, or Levi. And he puts his name out of humility. There was a man named Matthew sitting in the tax collector's place and said to him, Christ said to him, follow me. Sequere me. And he arose and followed him. This is one of the most beautiful accounts of a conversion ever recorded. And he's recording his conversion. It was really that simple. He heard about him. He probably thought, I'm not even worthy to raise my eyes to someone who's working such a miracle. But then our Lord passes. He stops by his booth looks at St. Matthew with those piercing eyes of the living God and says, follow me. And it shows the good heart. He might have sinned much, but he was a, a good heart underneath all this and sorry for his sins. And St. Matthew doesn't argue. He doesn't put obstacles. He doesn't give our Lord but, 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 but. As Bishop Sheen says, many, most souls go to hell on their butts. Because it's always, but this, but that, but this first, but that first. And St. Matthew, the beauty of this saint, our Lord said, follow me. He got up, dropped the money, left it all. He probably had bank, bank accounts. He probably had a lot of money stashed up. He left it all to follow him. And then later, St. Matthew holds a big dinner for our Lord. And of course, St. Matthew's friends are there. There are all the Harley Davidson, Davidson riders. There are the, uh, the guys with the tattoos and earrings. And uh, not always the most exemplary company. But St. Matthew discovered a treasure. He found the, the coin that he lost, the most precious coin, which is the holy faith, Jesus Christ, the living God. And he wanted to, like a good banker, he showed this prize to his friends this priceless coin, which is Jesus Christ, who wants to be have his image imprinted in us, but not a dead image, as on our coins, you have a dead image of the president, but you have a living image of the Blessed Trinity in our soul by sanctifying grace. And St. Matthew wants to show this treasure to his friends. Hopefully, <coughs> our Lord will convert many of them. So he also holds dinner and uh, all the sinners come, all the scandalous ones. And these are his buddies. So they're, they're maybe not the most exemplary people, but certainly they would have surrounded our Lord and asked him so many questions. And questions that many people steeped in sin really ask. You mean after all my sins, God will still forgive me? And our Lord would tell them, yes, if you're sorry and contrite for your sin, you are meant to do better, of course. That is the love of God. Don't, don't you know what he says in the scriptures? A contrite and humble heart you will not despise. But then our Lord would warn them also. Remember though, God is just. And, there, and at your death, he will render a strict account. And we're not to abuse the mercy of the, the love of God. So all the conversations that night probably went very late. Because uh, as priests, we bump into many souls of this sort. And sometimes they have very good hearts. They're stoked in sin, but they're, underneath all that soot and rot, it is a burning coal that thirsts for truth, thirsts for God. And our Lord would have sent some of those hearts to undoubtedly aflame with the love of God. St. Matthew introducing all his friends. And he would abandon his friends.
to follow our Lord because he loved God most. And that shows also the greatness of St. Matthew. And of course, the account of the Pharisees there outside looking in, scandalized that the great rabbi, the miracle worker, the one who preaches, is there sitting at a dinner with all these ugly sinners. And that's what our Lord says, it's not the healthy that need a sick, it's not the healthy that need the doctor, it's the sick that need the doctor. And I have come not for the just, or at least those who think they're just and perfect and without, don't need God's grace. I don't come for them, the proud, those blinded by pride. They don't need me. They don't need the doctor. But the sinners, I come for them. And who are sinners? Every single one of us, born of Adam and Eve. We're all poor, poor sinners, sick, wounded. We are really sick with leprosy, with disease. This is all the sorts of sin that, that are in our soul. And our Lord forgives us in holy confession by a good act of contrition, an act of perfect contrition, which we should try to make every night so you'd always die and live in the state of grace. So St. Matthew, he didn't mind putting his name on the big sinners list. But what a hope St. Matthew gives to us poor sinners. And, and how many, what if St. Matthew thought to himself, well, what would my friends think? Well, what would my parents think? I got to discuss this. I'm going to, what about all my bank account? I already got all my life savings and I got plans to do with it. Well, but, but, but this, but that. What if he put so many buts to our Lord that he didn't follow him after all? And he didn't follow his vocation because many, many souls receive this grace. Come and follow me, be a brother. Come and follow me, be a nun, be my wife, my bride. Sacrifice your life with me to save souls from hell. Come and be a priest. Come, help me save souls who I died for. And be a priest like my sacred heart. To go and like hungry, hungry dogs that go out through the city, says Psalm 138. The hungry dogs go through the city seeking to find something dead to drag, drag in and eat up. Psalm 138 mentions this because this must be the heart of a priest to go around the city seeking the dead souls and there's those trapped in sin, dead in sin and by their hunger bring them in into the holy stomach of the Catholic Church so to speak and this is the if St. Matthew did not follow his vocation and a vocation may only come once our Lord passed by St. Matthew's booth. He said, follow me. He would not come back again. And many, how many thousands of vocations are lost because of all the butts. And many butts go to hell, excuse me, many souls go to hell on their butts. Our Bishop Sheen is right. And many vocations are lost because they sit on their butts. Pardon me, but that's the way it is. And had St. Matthew not followed his vocation, we would not have this treasure of his gospel that inspired thousands and thousands of saints, monks, priests, nuns, almost every day, almost every Sunday, you have St. Matthew's gospel. It's the most used gospel by Mother Church of all the form. And we wouldn't have it. And if St. Matthew didn't follow his vocation, he wouldn't have died a martyr. He may have gone to hell, living with those kind of friends. He would have just became like his friends and followed them to hell. So St. Matthew followed his vocation. He did put excuses. He loved our Lord, and our Lord led him. Was St. Matthew a saint from then on? No! He betrayed our Lord when he fled in the Garden of Gethsemane. He committed many faults, many sins. But our Lord drew them higher and higher by his grace. And at the resurrection, and certainly at Pentecost, he confirmed those 12 apostles in grace, which means they would never commit a mortal sin until the day they died, and they would die martyrs. So the great Saint Matthew, how great a saint, let's pray to him. And of the four in the vision of, of the <coughs> Ezekiel, and in the vision of the apocalypse, 
There's four animals, the face of the man, the ox, the lion, and the eagle. The eagle is St. John because he pierces, the eagle that is said can look directly to the sun. St. John's Gospel begins, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He, draw, he flies like a monstrous eagle with full strength into the very vision of the Blessed Trinity. So St. John is the eagle. St. Luke, he's the ox, because his Gospel begins with a Zacharias, the high priest, offering sacrifice. One of the sacrifices was to offer an ox, the bull, to God. And he's the father of St. John the Baptist. And that's how St. Luke's Gospel begins. So he's the ox. And then the face of the lion is St. Mark, because the lion, his Gospel, begins with St. John the Baptist roaring in the desert, a voice crying in the wilderness. The animal, the lion, roars. He's the king of all the animals in the desert, in the in the desert lands or in the jungles. He's the king. And Saint Mark is the lion. And then the face of the man is Saint Matthew. Why? Because his gospel begins with the human genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. The human genealogy, because the Jews, as you know, were very meticulous about recording all the ancestry in the line of the males. So his gospel begins, the book of the origin of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac, Isaac begot Jacob, Jacob begot Judas and his brethren. Judas begot Phares and Zara of Tamar. <coughs> and then he goes on and on and on with all those Jewish names to show the link of Christ through St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary goes, goes right from the lineage of King David. So Christ is king. He is the, the true fulfillment of all the prophecies. And that's how St. Matthew's Gospel begins. So let's pray to this great saint and martyr. And uh, I encourage you, read his Gospel. If St. Dominic would carry it around him all the time and knew it by heart, <coughs> we should spend more time reading the simple catechism of the Apostles, which is St. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin. O Mary, conceived without sin.